Well, open your Bibles to Hosea chapter 4. We're going to start there this morning after we finish our discussion of some of the whys. I mentioned to you in the email the other day, and I also told you last week in the video and, and um, that we were going to discuss the why of the last question, you know, um, what do we, the body of Christ, Christians, what do we need to learn from 2020? And, you know, the how to, we need to learn how to live out our faith, how to live by biblical principles, and how to walk against the culture. And I was reminded of this again this week when I was trout fishing. There's a, there's a cardinal rule when you're wading in a stream. And that is if the water starts getting swift or high, uh, you turn and face the current. If you are away from the current, it'll buckle your legs and flip your feet out from under you. I know that. I had that happen one time when I was fishing a trout stream and there was ice on the edge of the river and snow on the ground. And I got on a rock, I uh, was knee deep and I had waded out and I had felt on the bottom of my boots too. And all of a sudden, I felt myself moving, <laughs> and I should have slowly turned and faced the current, and I didn't. I, I panicked, and I stayed that way and tried to go sideways, and I flipped and went under, and anyhow, I'm still here. But So how do we face the culture? How do we walk against the current of this culture? Um, how do we do that? Um, how do we live out our faith? How do we teach others to live out their faith? I'll tell you what, if it's, it's become increasingly important in my mind for us to look for other people to mentor. Look for other people younger than us or maybe even people our own age or our own spiritual age who are struggling and, and say to them, hey, let's walk this thing together. Um, when I was, um, when I was walking along the stream and going over the rocks and stuff, um, I was in too much of a hurry to get a walking stick. Man, once I stopped and got a walking stick because I had gone across the stream and halfway across the stream, my piddly little walking stick broke in half. <laughs> when I got to the other side, I got a good one. <laughs> and I said, what a difference to have that strength to lean on. Well, that's us. Um, two weeks ago, um, I had a, a young man reach out to me that used to go to Grace. He's back to, at Grace now. And um, awesome guy, but he just said, hey, I need someone to walk with me. Um, so we're starting to do that. And it doesn't mean you sit down and teach the person a Bible study. Now, if they need something out of the word, yes. If you need to take them through a uh, a passage on on suffering or whatever, yes. But it's more about modeling. It's more about taking scriptures as God gives them to you and sharing with them. Um, I use my phone a lot in in dealing with folks that I'm mentoring or try to encourage, uh, sending them songs that are full of the Word of God. And uh, I'll be going down the road and and I'll hear a song. Now. You know, you don't take a notepad and write it while you're driving. So I'll say, Siri, remind me. And she'll say, what do you want me to remind you of? And I'll say the name of the song and who wrote it. And then at the end of the day, I look at my phone and something that somebody gave me for Rick. I see it there and I say, oh, that's for Rick. And then I, I might say that song for Debbie, the, our friend in Virginia. Um, I've got to send her a song every night. I've been doing it for about 45 days. And um, I can't sit down and think of those, but as God brings them to my mind. So there are many, and, and I've had a number of different people say to me, man, that, that song, you know, Mark Longnecker has sent me some songs sometimes and, <clears throat> and or a link to a, a, a video or an article or something. And it was just what I needed then. Yes, Joy. That question that you posed for us to study, Roger and I have been reading in First Peter, and it, it tells something, it gives an answer in verse, in chapter one, 
verse 11, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you, they, they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, when they shall be told, glorify God in the day of revelation. Submit yourself to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be king or as supreme or governors, as unto those that have been sent for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that you may by well-doing put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. And then it says, um, this is trustworthy for a man of good conscience. Uh, what glory is it if you be buffeted for your faults if you take it patiently? But when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently. And for this, Jesus gave us example that we should walk in his steps. Mm -hmm. And so being subject to authority, but he says as pilgrims and strangers, that they will be ashamed as they see your good behavior. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you a funny story real quick? You know, our neighbors across the street that we've been praying for, well, I told her, why. I said, we feed the birds because every time I feed the birds, I say, those are God's birds, and he promises he's going to feed us. So she showed me, the, the, a couple days ago, she showed us, Joanna and Levin, the great platform she had made for the birds, and, and they had a thing underneath the cash. And a fountain for them. And everything she had done. Well, yesterday she came up carrying these things, and she said, God's birds are too messy. <laughs> she said, birds. they have made a mess. The mess was the halls of the place. And she said, I, I can't feed God's birds anymore. Do you want to feed them? And I said, Megan, do you realize that we're his children and we're messy? And what if God said, well, you're too messy? Yeah. And she kind of listened to that. It was just kind of an interesting thing. So we're feeding God's birds and the mess. And they're eating his house and house. But well, well, what a neat opportunity to tell her that, you know, we're God's children and we're messy. What if God stopped loving us because we're messy? Yeah. And and also you remind her that the birds are fertilizing her grass. Okay. <laughs> you know, what's interesting what you said though, I actually dovetails over with Hosea chapter four. Which we're gonna, which I ask you to turn to, because, uh, well, I'm not gonna get ahead of myself, but, but Hosea tells the people in Hosea four exactly these things that we're talking about, and what is not evident among God's people in those days. And he doesn't say you don't know me, but he says that everybody else doesn't know me because you're not telling them, not showing them. So, who had something else? Yeah, there you go. It's all recyclable. Found out something interesting, though. I was going to recycle some stuff at the cabin, and I said to my cousin, who they live in Colorado, I said, you, you, you guys are just throwing everything away. Don't you recycle? He said, it's too expensive to recycle. He said, you know what it costs us to recycle in, in Colorado? I said, the tree huggers, they, they, they're not friendly to recycling. And, you know, okay, that's for another time. But there's a lot of things that we can do. I have a lot of opportunities at the recycle centers to talk to people and tell them, uh, you know, we can't save the earth. But God says we're supposed to take care of it. And that's actually in Hosea 4 also. Boy, we're really getting ahead of ourselves today. All right. I think we pretty much know the how-tos because of how long we have been believers. But let's look and see what, what Hosea tells the people that God said. Um, Hosea chapter 4. My daughter had a pastor uh, previously at the Presbyterian Church where she goes in Lynchburg. And every time he stood and said, uh, before he preached, he would say, hear the word of the Lord. And that's the way Hosea starts chapter 4. Hear with attention. It's a word that means, I'm, hear it, listen to what it says, and listen to it with an intent to obey. 
Uh, it's the same word that's used in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. It's the same word that's used for the God who hears. Yahweh Shema. Hagar said, you are the Lord who hears me. Hear with attention. Isn't it cool that God hears us with attention and with an intent to act for us? He never just says, okay, well, they're, they're talking, whatever. It's not that way. He says, hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. For the Lord brings, notice how much this describes today. The Lord brings a charge, a physical, verbal argument, legal argument against you, the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth. Notice the three things that they're lacking, truth, mercy, and the knowledge of God. He doesn't say that they don't know God, but there's no knowledge of God in the land. You know, it could go away in less than a generation. I, one time I, I thought, what's the use of, you know, of, of, in front of somebody, something happens and they're all pagans or they're unbelievers. What's the use of saying that God did it? And according to the Lord's prayer, you know, we have a king. We're the citizens of his kingdom. And that's the way people are going to know that there is a king and that we are his citizens. If we acknowledge him, if we talk about him, uh, if we talk about him all the time, it's just a part of our life. It's not a preaching, teaching thing. It's a living thing. So he says, the charge is this, there's no truth. And that's the word for, for things that are completely, honorably, totally true. Nothing false about them, nothing facetious about them. It's the word of God. It's the nature of God to be true. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. It wasn't just a trite saying. Everything that came out of his mouth, everything that came out of God's mouth that we have recorded here, Everything the Holy Spirit ever leads us to do or say or think is all truth. And there is so little of that in the world today. I mean, that's part of what you're saying. <clears throat> Those people, your neighbors across the street, don't have a clue who made the birds. I mean, I, 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 saw, I saw birds feasting on bugs on the water when we were fishing. And I thought, they, these guys are just coming down here. They know what to do. And, and, and uh, I'm glad that the fish were hungry enough to, to not realize that what I was giving them was not from the Lord. But then when I caught them, they were a gift to me from the Lord. And uh, no truth, no mercy. The word mercy is chesed, the loving kindness. And it's a nature, it's part of God's nature, this loving kindness. It's one of his shared attributes. Um, I, yesterday morning when I was praying, I said, Lord, today, what shared attribute can I share with somebody else? What is there about your nature that somebody doesn't know and they can't see you and that attribute in you, but they can see it in me. They can hear it in me. They can experience it in me. Um, <clears throat> loving kindness, uh, tender mercies is another way that it's translated in the Old Testament. The third thing is knowledge of God. That's the simplest, broadest, most general Hebrew term, uh, yada, yada. You hear some Jewish people say yada, yada, in other words, whatever, whatever. Uh, well, it's not whatever, whatever. It's everything that can be known about God, generally everything. The general knowledge, the general revelation of him, but the specific revelation of him too, and that's his word of God. It includes everything that can be known about God. Now, <clears throat> Honestly, our human minds can't take all of it in. It would blow all of our circuits. Um, if someday we will be able to. Right now, everything that we don't see clearly now, when we have the mind of Christ, when we get to heaven, I hear people say, oh, I get to heaven, I'm going to ask this. I want to go see, per no, no, I don't think so. I think when we get to heaven, that ah moment, it's going to start when we cross over, when we die. And all of this stuff that's clogging our mind now, all of this stuff that bothers our heart now, it's all going to be gone. And we'll have the mind of Christ. And it's going to be a very, 
I told somebody the other day, the judgment seat of Christ is not going to be Christmas morning. It's going to be one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. After that, we'll be able to rejoice and be happy, happy, happy. One-on-one -on -one with Jesus. For us to see what's left of all of our life from the time we came to Christ until we die. Anything that, that was good and honored him and glorified him. Anything that was not worthless. And that's the word that Paul uses talking about the judgment seat of Christ, we'll, we'll be able to put it together and uh, sort of buy a gift for him, give it to him as, as a gift. I, I like the, um, the uh, singing group, Casting Crowns. That's what it's all about, the chapter in Revelation, where we take our crowns and lay them at his feet uh, from a prostrate, prostrate position on the floor, on the ground, we take them and lay them at his feet. Um, it's going to be the difference between what I could have been total, full, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead me from the time I was saved until I died compared to what actually came of my life. And uh, <clears throat> wow, that's, that's going to be something. And then, but we will know him. We will see him as he is. Our knowledge will be complete then. Uh, it can only be as complete as we allow the Holy Spirit to teach us and show us what the, the full revelation of the word of God is. Um, so truth, mercy, knowledge of God in the land. Tie, tie three things together. Verse two, the phrase knowledge of God. And verse six, my people are destroyed or made mute. They, they're, they're just... They have nothing to say. They have no usefulness for lack of knowledge. A negative, they, they don't have a knowledge of me that they should. And then look at verse six at the end, because you have forgotten. And that word forgotten is the opposite of yada yada. He said, you went from what could have been knowledge to, to nothing, to, to not even knowing about me or knowing but not really believing about me. You know, it's sad that some people's knowledge of God, some people's impression of God or Jesus is based upon us. That can be really good or it can be terrible. You know, I've, you've had people tell you before, well, if that's what a Christian is, or if that's what Jesus was like, I don't want anything to do with him. And... I don't know, I'm ashamed to say that sometimes it's been me. You know, it could be simple things. It could be big things. Um, you know, it could be, that's why yeah, I'm always reminded, I got to be careful if I got Christian symbols on my truck. Got to be careful that I drive like Jesus. Do I drive like Jesus? Well, I, I hope so. <laughs> yes. I think, he would, I think he would drive a Nissan Frontier truck. I do, I really do. It's a great truck. But... But, you know, how I drive it can cause people to either say this or to make bad signs. And, you know, courtesy, letting people, you know, when you're stuck in a traffic jam, don't you hate the person that goes, yeah, goes right by everybody and then expects to be let in up front? Uh, what do you do to that person? What would Jesus do to that person? You block him, okay. Thank you, Beth. Thank you for that. You know what? The good thing was the other day, the trucks, they were my friends. They had those, they had those guys blocked, not one person. They had us narrowed down to one lane. The sign said one lane ahead, two miles ahead of where we're actually one lane. So we're lined up for two miles. And I looked in this one blue truck. He was holding them back, buddy. And, and, and he was my friend, but when I had to blend in, when I didn't realize that that lane ended, uh, when I had to blend in, somebody was there and they helped me. And then when somebody else came up around, I, I was able to, to help them too. You know, the little courtesies, we've gotten away from them because of this pandemic stuff. Uh, holding door up open for somebody. Are we afraid to get too close to them? Um, Somebody thanked me the other day, and I said, well, you know, common courtesies, you can't quarantine against them, can you? 
and you're not supposed to. And if there's anybody that should have a knowledge of God, um, it should be us. And if there's anybody should around us could have a knowledge of God, it should be because of us. Um, notice he says here, I, and I think he, he's saying they, broke, they were breaking all 10 of the commandments at the same time. By swearing, he says, here's, here's why there's no knowledge of God in the land. Swearing, lying, killing, stealing, and committing adultery. He names five of the commandments, but then he goes on and says, they break all restraint, all of the law. Well, the original 10, you know, how would you feel if you got those 10? They're not easy. And then God says, well, by the way, I got 603 more. <laughs> Why did he have 603 more? Well, many times they were expansions on the original 10, but the other 603, the original 10, they were all out of necessity. God didn't take them out of the land and say, you know, we're going to school now. I'm making you guys toe the line. He knew, if you've been reading the daily matzahs about the 10 commandments, have I been posting those? Or is that next month? Okay. I forget sometimes. I write them a month ahead and then I forget when I did them. Well, there was a necessity for every one of those. It was for them because he knew what kind of culture they had come out of. Guess what? They're for us now because he knows what kind of culture we're in. And he said at least half of them. And what, what do you notice about all five of those? What's, what's, do, what do they all have in common? Who are they toward? They're toward people. Those are the people commandments. And because they had no knowledge of God, they didn't know how to treat people either. I can tell. I, I learned this early when I was in uh, high school. I went to work for uh, a little mom and pop ice cream stand. They had a, uh, I became a short order cook in the back. And um, the boss, the boss would come in and every Every law of cleanliness that we had to keep, he kept. And, and he would serve those people just like he expected us to serve them. Rudy would come in. It's called Rudy's Drive-In. Rudy would come in and he would wash his hands and he'd put on an apron and he'd go out front to see if anybody needed help. If there was a long line, he'd open another window and man, he'd serve it. He'd be so nice to those people because he knew those people were his valued customers. But he was nice to us, and he taught us how to treat those people, and it trickled down. You can go to any store, any business, and you can tell how management treats the workers by how the workers treat the people. Now, there are some exceptions. There are some people that will be nice to you, and it won't matter that their boss is a grouch. But most of the time, you can tell. And that principle is here. How do people have knowledge of God? By how we treat them, by what they hear us say, by how we care about them. We talked earlier about some of the things we could learn from, uh, from 2020. Uh, compassion. People need to see compassion in us. They, you know, everybody hold up in their house. You know, everybody's taking care of themselves. I think that's one reason that, especially partway through the, the pandemic, homeless people had Nobody wanted to stop and give them money even. Nobody wanted to stop and talk to them. Some of the homeless shelters were closed. And man, they just said, wow, we're out here by ourselves. Um, it does something to you if you are sitting at an intersection and you see people come out of the woods and you realize that that's where they're sleeping. That's where they're going when it gets too hot. Joy? No. You keep saying 603 other commandments. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, I'm sorry. 613. Um, yeah. Yeah, the Jews have 613 both written and oral laws, and that's their number, and they've, they've stuck to it. And but I um, like what Jesus said. Yeah. Love God and love people. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it is simple. And there's a Christian song that says that too. Yeah, it's the, it's the 10 plus 603. Because it's overwhelming. Yeah, it is overwhelming. By the but, way, friend, yes. just a little sideline on that. Yes. How they came up with that 613. They divided up 248 positive commands 
supposedly 248 bones in his body. <laughs> 365 negative commands for every day of the year. So they're serving God with every bone in your body every day of the year. Miracles. Wow. Okay. All, all right. Did you did you all hear that? Did everybody hear that? Say it again. Okay. Roger, come up here just a second. So you'll be close to the to the microphone here. And uh, so it'll be on the recording. The, how the Jewish people came up with 613 in their in their law system. Well, they counted 365 days, and so the 365 negative commands, and then 248 positive commands, and that's to be the number of bones in your body. So they had this saying, you know, serve God with every bone in your body every day of the year. <laughs> but you okay. know, one of the striking things to me in that is 365 negative commands, and that includes their oral tradition, and that that's good for a Legalist. Yeah, oh, it's great for a legalist. Yeah. It's a legalist dream come true, right. isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> just, just wanted to add a little uh, spice. Well, thank you. You, <laughs> add, you always add spice. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I hope you wrote that down. That's interesting. 248 bones in the body, the positive commandments, and 365 neg negative. <laughs> so we're supposed to add every bone in our body every day of the year. Okay. And that part's good. That, that part's really good. All right. Love God and love people. <laughs> All right, we need to put that song up next week. Okay, speaking of songs, I got it re ready to end at 1010 so we can have our song for this week. Next week, we're going to have that song, Love God and Love People. And since you've mentioned it three times, even I can hear the Lord speaking <laughs> in that. <laughs> okay. Love God and love people. Okay, uh, look back in, in Hosea's writings again. They break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed. Therefore, the land, I'm extending this a little bit. I had put down Isaiah 4, 1 to 3, but let's go 1 to 6 real quick. And I don't want to leave any of this out because it's, it's really good. Therefore, the land will mourn. In verse, four, he, or verse 3, he talks about the physical effects, the negative physical effects on creation when man doesn't follow God. And it's true. Okay, I'm going to pick on a couple of countries that I know and have been to. I've been to China, and while we're, we're wanting to force people to go to electric cars and do all this stuff, there are places in China where, God bless those people, there's no way they could ever drink the water. I was in, I was in Beijing, and I was riding a bike trying to keep up with, uh, with Todd Entner back in 20, almost 20 years ago. And... <clears throat> And he says, we're going down this wall along the side of this canal. He says, whatever you do, don't fall into the canal. I said, you know, you know, snakes? No. The water is so filthy. If you fall into that water, there'll be some place in your body that's that something that'll kill you will get into your body. And I, so I got off my bike and I pushed it on the top of that wall. There's no way I was going to ride it. And, you know, I'm standing there looking in their, in their high rise and I see thousands of plastic bags floating from the updrafts. And he says, that's the, the Chinese national bird is a plastic bag flying in Beijing. The air was so filthy, you couldn't breathe the air. Okay. Christian countries or countries that espouse Christian principles are usually not like that. And I think this principle is there. Mike. Several years ago, <coughs> when Sarah was getting ready to come home for Christmas, we were praying for clean air in Beijing to fly clean air from here because it was so polluted. They were actually grounding flights that could not take off or land. Wow. Yeah, they were doing it, and, and Japan, China, Taiwan, they were doing it long before we were. Uh, in um, When David lived in Taiwan, uh, the air was so filthy, not from Taiwan, but from the mainland, uh, because Taiwan had some pretty strict laws and principles that they had in effect in their republic. They were, you know, they had a representative government. But when you, when you, bought, a, when you bought a scooter, he, he traveled around on a scooter, when you bought a scooter, they had this gigantic display of masks. You had a mask for every day of the year. 
And uh, that's where I got my first camo mask. David picked me up a couple of camo masks, but you couldn't ride a, a, a small vehicle like that with your face uncovered. So um, let's finish up with this. Um, I want you to read verses four to six for next week, and then we'll go into chapter six, verses one to three. We're going to finish up uh, what we're going to say about Hosea next week. But notice in verses four to six, um, the references to fighting and destruction, um, anger. I mean, you see them every day. You see videos of people getting in fights on airplanes. Um, yeah, and, and people just shooting people, beating people over nothing. And um, now I know part of it is that everybody's got a phone now and we see the video of all this stuff. However, um, when we discuss verses four to six, what he talks about, it's because of no truth, no mercy, no knowledge of God. Uh, truth, truth, there's so much of a dearth of truth in the world today. Um, we'll talk more about that next week. Okay, um, here's our song and then we'll pray. You need to shut your video down. What? You need to shut your video down. I need to shut mine down? Okay. So that you don't All right. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. Oh, that's why I got to notice about that. Okay. All right. Well, let's pray. Father, thank you for the blessings of, of being able to know you. Oh, wow, your spirit, if your spirit was not inside of us, we could never know you. If your spirit had not drawn us, we could never have come to faith in you. Um, if we wouldn't know how to walk today or tomorrow, Lord, your leading is so amazing as we'll study next week in the book of Joel. Uh, thank you for being in us. Thank you for your awesome spirit that leads us. And please do that this week. I pray that more of the attributes of God would be evident to the people around us because of your spirit uh, helping us to live like you this week. In Jesus' name, amen. I wondered why that happened. I got a, a notice from...